as a result of applying those protocols, what did you conclude? Ms. Hurd did not have PTSD, and there were also pretty significant indications that she was grossly exaggerating symptoms of PTSD when asked about them. How did you make that latter conclusion? So one of the strengths of this test, as I mentioned, the important thing about any test used when you're doing an evaluation in forensics is to make sure that the person is responding accurately. And this test does that by not just asking people whether they have a symptom, but asking follow-up questions that draw out very detailed accounts of every single symptom of PTSD. And when you're really familiar with this disorder, which you need to be to administer this test, there are nuances in the way a person will describe their symptoms that have been shown repeatedly to indicate exaggeration or faking. There are also indications when somebody is clearly giving you a genuine response. Okay. What, if any, symptoms of PTSD did you observe in Ms. Hurd? So there are 20 kind of core symptoms that somebody might, can manifest with PTSD. You don't have to have all of them. Ms. Hurd initially said that she had, in the first question, you say, do you ever have this, before you get to the more nuanced follow-up questions. When I asked that first question on each item, she initially said, yes, I have that, to 19 of the 20 symptoms. That's not typical even of somebody with the most disabling form of PTSD. When we eventually sort of dialed it down, she had three remaining symptoms. And having symptoms of any disorder is common for all of us. Some of us struggle with sleep. Some of us get anxious. It could be several different disorders. It could just be that you have...